Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I'm back with another Box Talks episode. Let's talk April predictions. So if you're new to the channel or just have not been keeping up with this series, in my Box Talks episodes, I talk about Book of the Month, which is an amazing book subscription box that you can subscribe to. They release boxes every month in which you get to select from normally five, but they've just updated it to where they can have up to seven titles to pick from for their main picks every single month. They're all new releases that have great reviews and a lot of hype behind them, and you can get them for super cheap. In fact, if you use the link down below, you can get your first box for $5, so I definitely recommend it. But in this video, I'm going to be talking, like I said, about my predictions for the April Book of the Month box. In March, we had some killer choices. My goodness. I mean, they really threw us some curveballs with adding seven books in there, but man, there were so many good books to choose from. Honestly though, now that there can be up to seven books, I don't really know how to do this prediction video the same way because last month they featured two thrillers in their main picks. And so I'm going to go about doing it the same way that I did before. That being said, because we have more books to choose from every month from book of the month, I am going to up my amount of predictions from three books for each category to four books for each category. Not necessarily for all of them. Sometimes if there aren't a lot that strike my fancy or that I think would be great book of the month picks for each genre, I'll stick with three, but I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room to include four books instead of three. Before we jump into the rest of the video though, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already because I do post videos every Tuesday and Friday and I would love it if you stuck around and talked books with me. Now let's go ahead and talk about what I'm drinking today. Normally I drink hot tea, but today I felt like a sparkling water. I did feature this in my last video as well because they're so dang good. It's my Blackberry Mandarin caffeinated sparkling water from Target. It's dope. You should definitely try it. All right, no more wasting time. Let's go ahead and jump into my predictions. Now, as I do in all my prediction videos, I'm not going to read through the entire description that they have on Goodreads just because that would be a dang long video and I know you don't want to sit through that and I don't want to do all that talking. So we're just going to go ahead and read a short description that hopefully is at the top of each summary and I'll give you a few details on the books themselves. That way you can see if that's something you might be interested in. So first we have I Will Be You by Janelle Brown. Janelle Brown is a pretty popular author. She wrote a novel called Pretty Things, I believe. Yeah, okay, so it's called Pretty Things. That's one of her previous novels. She's written quite a few other books before as well, but that one in particular has been quite buzzy. I've seen it on Bookstagram a lot and kind of just all over the place. Um, but yeah, so that book was really popular. I don't believe she's ever been a Book of the Month author before though, so this would be a first. However, given this book's praise that it's gotten so far, just the hype around it, as well as the cover, I can definitely see this being a Book of the Month pick. Let's go ahead and talk about what it's about though. Two identical twin sisters and former child actors have grown apart until one disappears and the other is four to confront the secrets they've kept from each other in this twisty thriller from the New York Times bestselling author of Pretty Things. Okay, so we have sibling dynamics, which I always love in a good mystery thriller book. Really just like any dysfunctional family stuff thrown into a thriller adds an extra level of enjoyment for me personally. So very excited about that. Uh, in addition to that, this book currently has a 4.02 on Goodreads, which is pretty dang good if I do say so myself. This comes in at 368 pages and the release date for it is April 26th. So it's an April title. They do sometimes feature books that come out in May or already came out in March. But I think with that April release date, this definitely has a good shot of being one of, one of, because that's what we do now, I guess, with Book of the Month, one of the mystery thriller picks for the month of April. Next up is one that sounds so good and has been on my radar for quite some time. And that is Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. So this book I've seen a lot of buzz for on Bookstagram and Goodreads and NetGalley as well. There are quite a few reviews for it. And uh, yeah, it sounds great. Let me go ahead and read the description. Ocean's Eleven meets the farewell in Portrait of a Thief, a lush lyrical heist novel inspired by the true story of Chinese art vanishing from Western museums about dis diaspora, I think I said that right, uh, the colonization of art and the complexity of the Chinese American identity. I mean, come on, that sounds so good. I'm always down for a heist novel personally, so that definitely gets me. Honestly, there's just a lot going for this book. I'm always down for a good heist novel. I love the different things going on with this book. It sounds amazing, and I'm definitely gonna read it at some point regardless of whether or not it's a pick. That being said, it currently has a 3.87 on Goodreads with 412 ratings, so it does have a good number of ratings on there, and 3.87 is pretty good, not bad at all. This comes out on April 5th, so it is a great release date to be featured in the April box and it is 384 pages, which as we know, they typically feature books that are less than 400 pages. If they do feature one that's over 400, they'll have a little mark on it that says 400 plus pages, just so readers know because it's a little bit out of people's comfort zones, but this is really great. I honestly could see this being a easy April pick. 
All right, next we have one that I think could definitely be featured, especially because this author has been featured and quite loved before. The book I'm talking about in this case is Insomnia by Sarah Penborough. Now, Sarah Penborough did release the book Behind Her Eyes, I believe that's what it's called. Has Cross Her Heart been featured as well? Honestly, she might have multiple picks. I think Cross Her Heart by her has been featured as well, but Behind Her Eyes in particular was a very popular novel, especially because it did receive a Netflix adaptation last year, I think. Maybe it was the year before. I don't know. Time is a weird thing, especially with COVID. But uh, yeah, there was a Netflix adaptation of it that was quite popular as well. So with that adaptation and the fact that she has been featured before, I could see her newest book, Insomnia, absolutely being a pick for April. Let's talk about what it's about. In this twisty, mind-bending thriller from the best-selling author of Behind Her Eyes, Emma Avril worries that her crippling insomnia is a sign that she's slowly going insane, like the mother she's worked so hard to leave in her past. Emma Avril loves her life, her high-powered legal career, her two beautiful children, and her wonderful stay-at-home husband, but it wasn't always so perfect. When she was just five years old, Emma and her older sister went into foster care because of a horrific incident with their mother. So I'm not gonna read all this even though I really want to because it sounds super good. But like I said before, all of the links to the Goodreads pages are in my description. So go ahead and check those out if you want to. That being said, this sounds good. I love thrillers that have like a really mind bending aspect to it that really play with your mind. And uh, the insomnia factor definitely does because I can definitely see this being a, okay, is this narrator reliable or is she not because she's super tired? What's going on? I'm into it. I am definitely looking forward to reading this. I've never read anything by Sarah Penbro, but I've heard a lot of good things. So I'm very hopeful that this will be my first one because she'll be a book of the month selection. Yes. This book has a 4.05 on Goodreads so far with 288 ratings. It comes in at 336 pages and the release date is April 12th. So definitely check it out. The link is down below. Okay, so since I said earlier that Book of the Month is now featuring up to seven books in their main titles, as well as a lot of extra add-ons, I am going to go ahead and talk now about a fourth mystery thriller book. It was actually pretty hard to pick the mystery thriller selections this month because there are always so many good mystery thrillers coming out. And that is honestly probably the most popular genre with Book of the Month, maybe romance, but I think mystery thriller typically is their most popular genre so it's pretty hard to pick but this fourth book sounds amazing and it is categorized as mystery thriller sometimes but it could also be categorized as horror I'm down regardless. I love me a good horror book. I love me a good mystery thriller book. So that book is The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. McMahon? McMahon. Make, make something. Uh, to be honest, this book sounds pretty dang good. It says a genre defying new novel. See, it's genre defying, so I don't feel so bad about not knowing what to call it. Inspired by Mary Shelley's masterpiece Frankenstein that brilliantly explores the eerie mysteries of childhood and the evils perpetrated by the monsters among us. It's set in 1978. Uh, it, it, there's a lot going on here and Man, it sounds so good. I'm gonna, you guys should definitely check out the link below. Again, I mean, let me know honestly in the comments if you do want me to just go ahead and read the whole description in the next video. I don't ever wanna do that just because I know some people don't wanna watch super long videos, but if that's what you want, let me know. I will do what the people want. Back to this book. The Children on the Hill, like I said, is a horrifying book, it sounds like, but also has some really great mystery aspects to it. I love the fact that it's inspired by Frankenstein. I think that more books should be inspired by Frankenstein because that book is crazy. Um, and to be honest, I'm just so hyped about this book. It's gonna be great. It currently has a 4.29, which is the highest rating so far, and it's dang good, uh, with 351 ratings, and it comes out on April 26th. The page count is 352. I would be so hyped if this book was featured. Like really, Book of the Month should feature more horror books, in my opinion. There really aren't a lot, especially because the lines are kind of blurred between mystery and thriller and horror sometimes, but the more horror, the better, if you ask me. More horror, more horror. It's kind of hard to say. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to historical fiction. So with historical fiction, I have one feature title from last month and I'm gonna go ahead and knock that one out real quick just because this was the book that I actually hoped and predicted would be the pick for last month, but I was a little bit ambitious with thinking that because of the fact that it doesn't come out until April. That book is Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. So the description for this says, a spellbinding debut novel tracing three generations of a Southern black family and one daughter's discovery that she has the power to change her family's legacy. This is set in the summer of 1995, as well as other time periods as well, because I do believe that this is multi-timeline. I honestly am just so intrigued by this novel. It sounds amazing. It has been getting spectacular reviews. It has a 4.36 on Goodreads with 267 ratings. It comes in at 272 pages and the release date is April 5th. Honestly, like, this feels like a shoe in for book of the month. That's why I predicted it last month, despite the fact that it wasn't coming out until the following month. 
I would be so excited if Memphis was featured. It sounds amazing. These reviews are driving me crazy and it just seems so good. You should definitely check it out. You should. Next, we have The Good Left Undone by Adriana Trigiani. That's such a cool name. It just is. I like that name a lot. The description of this book says, from Adriana Trigiani, a master of visual and palpable detail, comes a lush, immersive novel about three generations of Tuscan artisans with one remarkable secret. Epic in scope and resplendent with glorious themes of identity and belonging, The Good Left Undone unfolds in breathtaking turns. First of all, I love the word resplendent. I feel like that word is totally underused and you should definitely try your best to use the word resplendent at some point today because it's a great word. But I love multi-generational stories, you guys. I've said this time and time again, I am always down for a good multi-generational story. I love that it's set in Tuscany. I think that is a super cool setting. I am down for the multi-generations and all of this madness of moving glory and resplendentness. It sounds great. You should definitely check this book out. It currently has, get this, a 4.5 five on Goodreads with 56 ratings. That's crazy good. So you should definitely check this book out. It is a bit on the long side if you're not one that likes long books. It comes in at 448 pages, so it would be a bit lengthy if they did feature it, uh, but it does come out April 26th of this month. So could be featured in April, could be featured in May, only time will tell. All right, third up for historical fiction, we have Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. This book also has really good ratings. We'll go ahead and get to that in a minute though. It says, inspired by true events that rocked the nation, a profoundly moving novel about a black nurse in post-segregation Alabama who blows the whistle on a terrible wrong done to her patients from the New York Times bestselling author of Wench. So this is set in Alabama in 1973. This time period is super important. There's so much going on with civil rights during that time. And I think that this is going to be a very powerful novel. I haven't heard of this author before now. That being said, she does have a few other novels. So if you find you do enjoy this book or you've read other books by this author, you should definitely check this book out. Currently this has a 4.42 on Goodreads and it comes in at 320 pages. The release date for this is April 12th. Man, I could definitely see this one being a good pick as well. There are a lot of good historical fictions coming out in April, let me tell you. The fourth historical fiction pick that I have selected as my prediction is a debut novel by Jenny Tinghu Zhang. That novel is Four Treasures of the Sky. I love this book cover, honestly. I think it is so cool. When I first saw it, part of me was like, wait, is that a fantasy book? But it's not. It is a historical fiction book. The description on Goodreads says, a propulsive and dazzling debut novel set against the backdrop of the Chinese Exclusion Act about a Chinese girl fighting to claim her place in the 1880s American West. Dayu never wanted to be like the tragic heroine for whom she was named, revered for her beauty and cursed with heartbreak. But when she's kidnapped and smuggled across an ocean from China to America, Dayu must relinquish the home and future she imagined for herself. This takes place over a number of years. It seems like it's gonna be super emotional and powerful. I love that it's set in the 1800s. I think that there should be more books featured in this time period. This comes out on April 5th and it is 336 pages long. And the ratings for this are pretty dang good so far it does have a 4.37. If this book sounds good to you or any of the other books like I said go ahead and click that Goodreads link down below to check it out. All right so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the literary and contemporary genre of fiction. Let's go ahead and talk my prediction. First up we have Like a House on Fire by Lauren McBrayer. This is a debut novel and here's the description on Goodreads. After 12 years of marriage and two kids Merritt has begun to feel like a stranger in her own life. She loves her husband and sons but she desperately needs something more than sippy cups and monthly sex. So she returns to her career at Jagger and Brandt, where a brilliant and beautiful Danish architect named Jane decides to overlook the break in Merritt's resume and give her a shot. Like I said before, this is a debut novel and I had not heard of this book before doing some research for this video. That being said, it has been getting quite a bit of buzz and the reviews so far are pretty good. It's got a 3.91 so far with 165 ratings. The page count on this is 320 and the release date is April 26th. Have you noticed the theme I'm trying as hard as I can to not predict too many May books because I've just, I've been burned so many times. Although Book of the Month is just so sporadic with the dates on these books. So, I mean, I couldn't be blamed, but anyway. All right, next up we have The Lifeguards by Amanda Iyer Ward. Iyer? Maybe I said it right, I don't know. I'm really bad with names, you guys, I really am. Here's the description for this book though. The bonds between three picture-perfect but viciously protective mothers and their close-knit sons are tested during one unforgettable summer in a gripping novel from the New York Times bestselling author of The Jet Setters. Book of the Month does like to feature books about motherhood as well as the relationships between parents and things like that. So I could definitely see this being selected. I don't think 
that her previous novel, The Jet Setters, was a book of the month pick. I could be wrong. I am not 100% sure. This book does currently have a 3.54 on Goodreads though, so that is a bit lower. Not like crazy low, but it's, you know, lower. Uh, and it has 140 ratings so far. The page count for this is 368, and the release date is April 5th. Okay, so the next one that I have picked for this genre is a bit of a stretch, but I could see it happening. That book is The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. The Candy House is a sort of sequel, sort of companion novel to the 2010 book, A Visit from the Goon Squad. Now, A Visit from the Goon Squad was highly praised. I believe that it won the Pulitzer. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm pretty sure that it did. Um, but the reason that I say that it's a bit out there, like I said, is because it is sort of a sequel. However, Book of the Month will sometimes do this where they will feature like previous books in a series in addition to the newest edition so that readers can get both if they want to. And I could honestly see them picking The Candy House as a main pick and then maybe A Visit from the Goon Squad as an add-on. So like I said, it is a bit out there, but it could definitely happen. The Goodreads description says, from one of the most dazzling and iconic writers of our time and winner of the Pulitzer Prize, I was right, an electrifyingly, oh no, an electrifying, deeply moving novel about the quest for authenticity, privacy, and meaning in a world where our memories are no longer our own, featuring characters from A Visit from the Goon Squad. So this book is set in 2010, I believe, which is when the previous book was set. I know that's when it was published, but I think that's when it was set as well. Um, and like I said, this definitely seems like it could be featured just because I think the book of the month would take that jump because of the fact that this is a very highly anticipated novel. This book currently has a 3.93 on Goodreads or 330 ratings. It comes in at 352 pages and the release date is April 5th. And the fourth and final literary slash contemporary fiction prediction that I have is Unlikely Animals by Annie Hartnett. So this is kind of a contemporary book, but it does also have notes of magical realism. So keep that in mind. The description on Goodreads for this says, a lost young woman returns to small town New Hampshire under the strangest of circumstances in this one of a kind novel of life, death, and whatever comes after from the acclaimed author of Rabbit Cake. I have not read Rabbit Cake or even heard of it, but that's a book that she's written apparently, and I like the cover of that one too, so you might want to check that out. However, this book has been getting some crazy good reviews, you guys. It currently has a 4.36 with 194 ratings. I love this cover as well. Personally, I could definitely see it being a book of the month cover with that little box in the corner just covering that little fox up there. This book comes in at 368 pages, and the release date is April 12th. Those are all of my contemporary and literary fiction predictions, however, so let's go ahead and move on to sci-fi and fantasy. In the month of April, we have some super super exciting books coming out in the science fiction and fantasy genres. First of those is Electra by Jennifer Saint. If the name Jennifer Saint sounds familiar, that is because last year her novel Ariadne was featured, and that was quite a popular pick, so I could definitely see them featuring Electra. Now this is not a sequel to Ariadne, however it does have to do with mythology as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the description of this one. The House of Atreus is cursed, a bloodline tainted by a generational cycle of violence and vengeance. This is the story of three women, their fates inextricably tied to this curse and the fickle nature of men and gods. <sighs> it sounds good, I'm down for it. I love strong female characters. I love mythology in books. It sounds so dang good. This book currently has a 4.14 on Goodreads with 174 ratings. The page count is exactly 400, so I don't know if they would put the 400 plus page count marker on there or not, but they might. And the release date is April 28th. I could absolutely see this being featured in April. Next up, we have what feels like a little bit of a long shot because I've wanted this author to be featured before and she has yet to be featured. That is Emily St. John Mandel's new novel, Sea of Tranquility. If that name sounds familiar, that is because she wrote the novel Station Eleven, which is wildly popular all over the place on booktube and bookstagram and has been popular for a number of years. And then it did just get a adaptation, I believe on HBO Max, maybe? I don't know. I haven't heard if that's good or not. If you've watched it, let me know in the comments. But yes, she wrote Station Eleven. She also wrote The Glass Hotel, which came out a couple years back. I think that one got a little bit more mixed reviews than Station Eleven. But this newest book, Sea of Tranquility, has been getting some crazy good reviews. The description of this one says, the award-winning best-selling author of Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel returns with a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon 300 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries and space. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. Again, this feels like a little bit of a stretch because this author is so popular and this is such an anticipated release for 2022. That being said, if it is featured, I'm gonna snatch that book up so quick. 
I love that it's a historic, I love that this is a historical fiction book that takes place in the past, but goes so far in the future as well. I love it when authors do that and take that risk because it feels like a bit of a risky move to balance those two genres, but I'm sure that she's gonna do it really well, especially because this book currently has a 4.46 on Goodreads with 560 ratings. Those 560 lucky people that got to read this early. This book is 272 pages, which is such a great length for a book of the month pick. I'm a little bit nervous about that though, because I always get a little bit worried when it's like a widely spanning timeline in a book and it's under 300 pages, but the, the reviews are good. So I guess she does it well. This book does also come out on April 5th and I would be so pumped if it was featured in April. So the final two books that I have featured for the sci-fi and fantasy category are a little bit of a stretch as well because they are both young adult novels. Now, Book of the Month is no stranger to featuring young adult novels. However, I'd say it's probably like two to three a year maybe out of all of their picks. So it's definitely not a guarantee. Maybe these will be add-ons or maybe they'll be main picks, but we'll see. The first of those books is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. This book has been getting a ton of buzz, partly I think because of the comparisons that it has drawn. It says, for fans of Carval and the Night Circus, See what I'm saying? Here's the description though, and I'm gonna butcher some of these names and I'm so sorry. This decadent and darkly enchanting YA fantasy set against the backdrop of a bell epoque, maybe, inspired hotel follows 17 year old Johnny as she uncovers the deeply disturbing secrets of the legendary Hotel Magnifique. So that sounds pretty dang good, to be honest. I love books that are set in like magical buildings or hotels or things like that. I think that is super fun. It sounds really great. I'm not crazy about YA books, to be honest. I just don't pick up that many of them, but I would definitely be willing to pick this up. I also do really enjoy the cover. I think the colors are great on there. This currently has a 4.10 on Goodreads with 194 ratings. It comes in at, again, exactly 400 pages and the release date for this one is April 5th. April 5th is gonna be a huge day in publishing, I guess. And the last science fiction and fantasy book that I have is An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Pan. If that name sounds familiar, that is because this author was featured previously in Book of the Month with her novel, The Astonishing Color of After. I have not read that book, but I've heard it is super emotional and moving and magical, and I'm dying to pick that one up. So I would be very interested to see if this one is selected for Book of the Month. The short description on Goodreads for this one says, Romeo and Juliet meets Chinese mythology in this magical novel by the New York Times bestselling author of The Astonishing color of after. It follows two characters named Hunter Yi and Luna Chang as they deal with their family's issues and past as well as other magical elements it seems. I really do enjoy Romeo and Juliet inspired novels if for no other reason then you have to wonder the whole time if they're going to go like all the way with like what happens in Romeo and Juliet or not. There's always that kind of tension and suspense. This book has a 4.14 in Goodreads so far with only 79 ratings so not a ton so far but it comes in at again exactly 400 pages and the release date for this is April 12th. Those are all of the fantasy and sci-fi predictions I have for you though. Now let's go ahead and jump into romance. So first for romance, we have one that is actually pretty shocking for me because of the ratings that it has so far. That book is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This book has a 4.70 on Goodreads with over a thousand ratings. Like I don't really read a lot of romance to be honest. I just, I don't gravitate towards it. But with that kind of like, average, a 4.70, even I'm interested. The description for this one says, the New York Times bestselling author of Life's Too Short delivers a refreshingly modern fairy tale perfect for fans of Casey McQuesten and Emily Henry. After a wild bet gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and cuddle with a baby goat, Alexis Montgomery has had her world turned upside down. The cause, Daniel Grant, a ridiculously hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and as casual as they come, the complete opposite of sophisticated city girl Alexis. And yet their chemistry is undeniable. And it goes from there. Again, I don't really gravitate towards romance books, but a 4.70 is just undeniable. This book comes in at 400 pages and it does release on April 19th. Next up, we have The No Show by Beth O'Leary. Now, Beth O'Leary is an author that I have actually kept up with. I read her book, The Flat Share, when it came out a few years ago, and I really enjoyed that one, actually. I also did pick up her book, The Switch, but I ended up DNFing it just because I wasn't in the mood for it, not necessarily because it was anything wrong with the book. She's also released another book since then called The Road Trip. The reason that I mention all this is because every Every year I'm always kind of anticipating maybe Book of the Month featuring her books and they don't. So if they did feature her new book, The No Show, then it would be a little bit of a surprise to me, but it seems like it could be a really good pick. The description on Goodreads says, three women who seemingly have nothing in common find that they're involved with the same man in the smart new rom-com by Beth O'Leary, best-selling author of The Flat Share. We have quite the conundrum there. The thing with Beth O'Leary is she comes up with some very dramatic situations, but they always end up being like 
not comical, but like lighthearted and enjoyable to read about anyway. So I can definitely see this one being featured. It currently has a 4.18 with 334 ratings, comes in at 352 pages, and it comes out April 12th. Next, we have The Wedding Crashers by Mia Sosa. The description of this one on Goodreads says, the USA Today bestselling author of The Worst Best Man is back with another hilarious rom-com about two strangers who get trapped in a lie and have to fake date their way out of it. So we have fake dating. That is quite the trope in romance books. A lot of people enjoy that one. So it seems like it could definitely be a popular selection if they did choose to go with it. It currently has a 4.09 on Goodreads with 429 ratings. It comes in at 320 pages and it releases on April 5th. Now though, let's talk about a book that is not going to be released on April 5th. And that is because it actually doesn't come out until May. So this is the only book on my list that I have chosen that comes out in May. However, the release date for this one is May 3rd. So it's just barely in May. You know, and this is an author that has been featured by Book of the Month so many times, it feels like they have to feature it almost. And that book and author is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So Emily Henry is a crazy popular Book of the Month author. Two of her books in particular have been super popular on there, those being Beach Read and People You Meet on Vacation. I've read both of those and liked one of them more than the other, but they're both pretty good. But those aren't the only two Emily Henry books that have been featured on Book of the Month. Her other book, A Million Junes was featured maybe even others like honestly she's been featured a handful of times so i could definitely see them picking book lovers as a pick now i am including this on this list because they do sometimes do early releases and i think everyone would be super excited if this book was released early that being said i would say it's probably more likely that it be featured in may than in april let's get into the description of this one though one summer two rivals a plot twist they didn't see coming nora stevens's life is books she reads them all and she's not that type of heroine not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister Libby. Which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her first sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story. And it goes from there, but this book I think really could be featured. Like honestly, I think people will be pretty upset if it's not featured just because Emily Henry is kind of a staple of Book of the Month at this point. She's even had, I think, Beach Read and People You Meet on Vacation, maybe just People You Meet on Vacation, but both of those books have been, I believe, selected as Book of the Year nominees, neither of them won, but she's quite beloved in the Book of the Month community, so I could definitely see her being selected for April or May. This book has some crazy good reviews on Goodreads though, with an average of 4.55 out of 1,377 ratings. Definitely very loved. It comes in at 384 pages and the release date, like I said earlier, is May 3rd. Okay, so now we're in the portion of the video where normally I would select my official predictions for the books that I think will be the book of the month picks for each genre. The problem is because they're featuring up to seven books every month now as main picks, and sometimes there can be two or more books in the same genre for main picks, I'm a little bit tied up here. So I'm thinking I'll go ahead and stick with my normal way of doing it and just picking one. If that's not what you guys think I should do, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for advice with these videos, you guys, so let me know there. Despite that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick one per genre in this video of what I think will be featured. So for mystery and thrillers, I think I'm gonna have to go with Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. As much as I would really enjoy The Children on the Hill or Portrait of a Thief maybe more, I think Insomnia could definitely be featured and I'd be happy if it was, I would definitely read it. So that's my pick for mystery thriller. For historical fiction, again, I'm gonna have to go with Memphis just because I really do think this is a shoe in for book of the month. It would be amazing as a pick, but there are a lot of great historical fiction books coming out in April. So definitely check all those out in the description below. For literary and contemporary, I'm gonna have to go with Unlikely Animals. I just really think this is going to be a great book and I think that Book of the Month readers would really enjoy it. With the magical realism, the family dynamics that are in there, and the fact that this just has some really great reviews so far, I think Unlikely Animals is a great pick. For fantasy and sci-fi, as much as I would love to pick Sea of Tranquility, and I will be pleasantly surprised if that is the pick for April, I'm gonna have to go with Electra, and I think that's still a really great pick. And for romance, for this month, I'm gonna guess part of your world but I wouldn't be surprised if Book Lovers by Emily Henry ends up sneaking into April. But that is all for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Like I said, I would love some feedback in the comments on what you guys think of the number of books I'm featuring, on whether or not I'm reading the whole description of them or not, uh, and the sort. I could just really use some feedback, so I would love it if you guys would leave me a comment down below. Also, just let me know which of these books excite you the most. I would love to talk books with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!